Today we're going to be learning how to do a compare and contrast, focusing on the criteria for function and purpose. So we're looking at two artists and we're going to look at how we compare their work and look at what was their reason behind their work, what was their function, the purpose of their piece. So well, why did they make it? What was it for? Uh, who was the audience? What, was, what were they trying to say? These sorts of things are what we're going to be discussing as we look at these two pieces. Okay, so. As I said, compare and contrast, looking at function and purpose. This is for the distance learning for the senior students at EISM to work on how to create slideshows for the IB. Um, this can also be used for task A of the e-portfolio because it is something that you have to do as well. Um, but it doesn't fit exactly the criteria terms, it's just kind of more roughly connected. So function and purpose. So what are we looking at? What did the artist want to say? What did the artist want to help understand? Who paid for the artwork? Where was it created for? And who is looking? Remember, you can't necessarily answer all of these questions, but you can answer some of them. Um, so it helps us fill in the blanks for the story of the artwork. Some things that we might look at for function purpose are listed here on the side of the slide in the table. So today we're going to be looking at two pieces by Canadian artists. This is by Lorraine Gilbert. She's actually one of my old professors from university. She's a photographer. Uh, this is old clear cut three. Um, and it's the whole piece. It's all of these seven photographs put together. It's a composite image. And then this piece is by Lawrence Paul Yacolopton. Uh, it's clear cut to the last old growth trees an acrylic on canvas painting. Um, and we're going to be looking at both of these pieces and talking about their similarities and differences. So you can see on this slide, I've set up a Venn diagram. I've got a circle, one on both sides, um, and they overlap in the middle for traits that are similar to each other, as opposed to similar traits that are differences. This is how we get our compare and contrast. Um, now both artists, oh, sorry, correction, um, Gilbert has a history of recording the changing landscape and the effect of industry on the forests. A long history of that within her artworks and her photography. Um, and this piece is no difference. It does focus on the effect of the changing landscape. She was specifically looking at how the forests were regrowing despite the clear cutting that had happened long ago. Um, whereas Yuquelopton has a history of recording the treatment of First Nations people and the lands within Canada. He does focus on the land, um, as does Gilbert, but it's not just the land. This piece, however, very much is tied to the land. However, it's connected also to the political issues of the First Nations people. Um, so they're both sharing the effects of clear cutting in British Columbia, but one is more just for one side and one is a little bit on both. In Gilbert's piece, she shows a resurgence of the forest, whereas Yucalton is focusing on the destruction. His forest is only left with one tree and there's nothing else. Uh, they're both giving voice to their concerns. They're both focused very much on ecology. It's important to both of them. And you can see that in both pieces. They both document what's going on. Although Gilbert documents in a very clear way using photography, uh, Pelton does so through painting and it's still a document, although it's more expressive. And they're both critical. The criticism that Pelton is showing is stronger, but Gilbert is showing a, a criticism of the forestry, forestry industry as well. Um, Pelton is very clearly political. He's focusing on the rights of Indigenous people within Canada. And the artist has said that my work is to record. This is why it's very much tied to documentary. He's literally told us that his piece is to record. It might be recording a surrealist landscape version of it, but he's recording his feelings and emotions of what is happening. Eucalpton has also said, painting is a form of political activism a way to exercise my inherent right, my right to authority, my freedom. I can speak out in my paintings, even without the recognition of self-government. By the way, the citations are at the bottom of the slide. Um, you should be doing some in-text citations as you go along. Um, but it's very much 
as I said, political. He is trying to speak and give voice to his people through his art. And he very much has done so. His works do stand out very strongly. Um, Gilbert is more about educating the people about what's going on. Okay, this, this piece shows this regrowth and this resurgence and it causes a conversation that focuses more on education. Um, also the techniques that she's used to create this series of photographs, it shows to a level of skill and virtuosity. She had to use different techniques. So this, the purpose of this piece is connected to that very much. Whereas you look at Yquelton and his is very symbolic and it's very much filled, as I said before, with emotional saturation. He's really getting the emotions across. So these are some of the things that you might talk about when you talk about function and purpose. Remember, if you are stu student in years 10 and up, I expect this to have a great deal more detail than I've included, uh, especially for the DP students in year 12 and 13. However, for any year nines who are using this as part of their art analysis, um, please be aware that uh, you can probably just do just this level because it's just beginning to get used to how we research and how we write about artwork. All right, thank you for watching.